Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 45th Annual California Peace Officers Enrollment Ceremony. I am Juan Vermontes, and I have the privilege of serving as the president of the California Peace Officers Memorial Foundation. I now have the distinct honor of introducing our esteemed guests and dignitaries who join me on stage. Governor Gavin Newsom. Lieutenant Governor Eleni Konolakis. Attorney General Rob Bonta. Chief Justice of California Supreme Court, Patricia Carrero. The Memorial Foundation's legislative sponsor, Senator Tom Umberg. Sheriff Chad Bianco from the Riverside County Sheriff's Office. Elk Grove Chief of Police, Bobby Davis. <laughs> Senior Chaplain Matt Van Persen from the Woodland Police Department. And now please welcome our Master of Ceremony for the 45th Annual California Peace Officers Enrollment Ceremony, Attorney General Rob Bonta. Thank you and good morning. Please stand for the posting of the colors. Lieutenant Elmore, post the colors. At this time, Senior Chaplain Matt Van Pearsom for the Woodland Police Department will provide the invocation. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come before you today as a family united by a common bond. And to those who've been there, nothing compares to the heart-wrenching announcement of an officer down. We pause for a moment today to honor our brothers and sisters who have made the ultimate sacrifice, who've paid the ultimate price. They gave their lives to protect our families, our homes, 
our communities, and our way of life. We know that you are the one who gives us the mental determination and strength to go throughout each day, remembering their sacrifice while at the same time honoring it through our own lives. I pray for each family member, colleague, and friend who for this day of remembrance comes nothing in general but a specific name, a specific face, and the loss of someone close. As the psalmist reminds us, you are the one who heals the brokenhearted, who binds our wounds and rescues our crushed souls. Would you be with us today as we mourn their loss and express our gratitude for how they laid down their life so that others may live? We ask for your presence in these moments, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Senior Chaplain. Please welcome Deputy Joseph Devella from Orange County Sheriff's Department who will sing the national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Please be seated. Please join me in welcoming our special guest, California Supreme Court Chief Justice, Patricia Guerrero. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Peace Officers Memorial Foundation for inviting me to be here with all of you today. As I look out at the audience, my heart goes out to all of you who have lost family members, loved ones, who you deeply care for and cared about, and also to the peace officers who have lost colleagues who are also like family. As Chief Justice, this is my first year and first opportunity to be here with all of you, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. As a judge, I know how important it is to be able to rely on the work that you do. You provide the security so that we can do our jobs in providing access to justice, and you are the first interaction um, with the people who come before us. But I'm not only here today as a judge, I'm here as a daughter, a mother, a sister, a wife. And I know that today is an important day, but anyone who has lost somebody that we love knows that it's the daily moments where we shed tears of joy um, and we shed tears sometimes of happiness when we think back with fondness of our loved ones. 
and I feel that here with all of you today. So I think it's important for us, and I join in commemorating the ultimate sacrifices that were made by our fallen peace officers. Um, but also I would just, I think it's important to remember the work that you do every day. And we're thankful for that. So thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice. We're grateful for your presence today. It's now my pleasure to introduce the governor of the great state of California, Gavin Newsom. The uh, late great jurist Oliver Wendell Holmes once remarked that his life is action and passion. It's required of all of us to share the action and passion of our time at peril of being judged not to have lived at peril of being judged not to have lived. What he was saying is each of us will be judged and perhaps more importantly and powerfully ultimately judge ourselves to the extent we contribute to the life of our city, our state, our nation, and the world we're trying to build. Today we gather in the spirit of remembrance. Today we honor the lives of heroes lost. Californians of astonishing daring and decency, none who are in peril of being judged not to have lived. Those who made the choice, a choice every day to put their lives on the line in pursuit of justice and safety. Long shifts, endless stress, no fame, no fortune. Too few thank yous from the public they served. That's a special and unique form of public service. It requires a special kind of character, a special kind of bravery to be a peace officer. There is no California without courageous Californians determined to serve and protect it. Our very way of life, our liberties, our pursuit of happiness, our aspirations, the entire dream, the California dream, depends on maintaining the rule of law and those fearless fearless, faithful few willing to unflinchingly stand watch. Today we honor those who stood watch, who made the ultimate sacrifice. Officer Lenahan, Officer Vela, Correctional Lieutenant Taylor, Officer Alvarado Jr., Officer Tipping, Sergeant Michael Paredes, Officer Santena, Deputy Cordero, and Officer Michael Edward Wall. These officers did more than just reflect the heart of California. They were its spine. They held us all up. They deserve not to just be remembered, but to be revered. And their loved ones, the loved ones who sacrificed in ways unimaginable, deserve an extraordinary debt of gratitude Gratitude that is immeasurable. You had our backs. Now California will have yours to support you in the weeks, months, and years to come. Your loved ones gave their lives in the battle that never ends. They died for law, order, justice, and peace. And while we can never match their medal, we can match their resolve to make California and our community stronger to do the work necessary to make the job of a peace officer safer. Not only make our peace officers the best funded, best trained, and best equipped in the nation, but by providing unprecedented supports for your health and your well-being. On behalf of everyone here, the Peace Officers Memorial Foundation, the distinguished leaders of law enforcement, on behalf of 40 million Americans, Californians, all, I offer respect from a grateful state. Their calling was to keep the peace. We pray they have found peace. Thank you, Mr. Governor, for your words and your presence. While we're gathered here to mourn the loss of nine brave peace officers, we're also here to honor their love. For as scripture wisely teaches us, 
No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Proudly donning a uniform, pinning a badge to your chest, and going into the world in service of others takes a tremendous amount of courage, but it takes even more love. Love of community, love of neighbors, love of service, love of duty. A love so potent that it lives on in the hearts of our fallen officers' spouses, children, parents, siblings, friends, and partners, in all of you. There's truly nothing I can say to ameliorate your sorrow, to patch the holes left in your hearts, to bring back your heroes. What I will say is that California is eternally in your debt. For while it took a great act of love and courage for these heroes to put their lives on the line each day, it also took a great deal of love, courage, and selflessness for you to send them out into the world carrying a piece of your hearts with them. California will never forget all that you gave and all that you've lost. We will forever carry you in our hearts, minds, and prayers. This memorial is an everlasting symbol of that commitment. I want to thank the California Peace Officers Memorial Foundation Board of Directors and staff for their stewardship of these solemn grounds, for ensuring that California will always pay its respects to the peace officers who valiantly traded all of their tomorrows in service of their fellow Californians. So today, as we grieve, let us also vow to always remember the sacrifice, the courage, and the love of our fallen heroes. Thank you. Please now welcome vocalist Miss Jennifer Grant, surviving daughter of Deputy David Grant, Tulum County Sheriff's Department, end of watch, May 31st, 2004, who will sing when I get there. Is there a place you go 
to watch the sunset knows there is song you just can't wait to share yeah i know you'll tell me when i get there you'll tell me when i get there will you save me a place with all those pearls of wisdom yeah i'll make some mistakes and you watch me as i live them till i'm through till i'm with you it's there a bar up there where you've got a favorite chair where you sit with friends and talk about the weather is there a place you go to watch the sunset knows there a song you just can't wait to share yeah i know you'll tell me when i get there i think of you when i think about forever Thank you, Ms. Grant. Lieutenant Elmore, commence the folding of the United States flag.
Next, it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Sheriff Chad Bianco, Riverside County Sheriff. Thank you and good morning. I am extremely honored to be present and to be able to participate in this morning's memorial. On behalf of all of the California State Sheriffs and the Chiefs of Police, I want to offer my sincere condolences to the families of our fallen heroes. I can tell you this is not the address that any law enforcement leader wants to give and a gathering that all of us wish did not have to occur. However, memorial services are important to all of our lives as we remember our loved ones and question our own vulnerabilities. As we come together as a large extended family, we must remember that God designed all of us to dwell and flourish in community. There is also something very powerful and healing when we come together under a common bond to mourn, remember, and celebrate the lives of heroes who gave their lives in the service of others. This year we are adding nine names to this memorial. Nine families whose lives forever changed when their loved ones said goodbye at the beginning of the day, never to return home. Seven agencies suffered through the pain of losing a partner, a brother in service, as the ultimate price was paid in service to their community. I have the unfortunate distinction of losing two deputies in 2022, Lieutenant Steve Taylor and Deputy Isaiah Cordero. Deputy Cordero was the last California law enforcement officer to die in 2022 when he was murdered four days after Christmas. Tragically, less than two weeks later, California lost the first law enforcement officer of 2023 when Riverside County Sheriff's Deputy Darnell Calhoun was also murdered. As we look around us, we see many different colors of uniforms, different styles of badges, different patches on our shoulders, and yet we are all the same. We are part of the same large extended family. The men and women who don these uniforms share a special bond. Despite what some political leaders, activists, and some in the media would like everyone to believe, we are the best of the best that society has to offer. Men and women who sacrifice their personal families and their personal lives willingly in true service above self fashion in order to protect the lives and the property of others, people they don't even know. We hold ourselves to a higher standard than all others. We live our lives knowing that unwavering honesty and integrity in not only our professional lives but our personal lives determine whether or not we remain employed and allowed to continue to serve others. Our commitment to place our lives on the line for people we do not know is something that people outside this profession cannot understand. Unless you are wearing this uniform, your position, your title, your career is not determined by this same standard. Some should be thankful of that. When we lose a loved one, sometimes the first question is always why. For law enforcement, when we lose a brother or sister in the line of duty, the answer is sometimes a very simple one. It isn't because we chose this career, and it certainly isn't part of the job that we signed up for. Let me assure you, it wasn't the gun's fault or the non-existent made up emotional buzzword of gun violence. The real answer is as old as time itself, the battle of good versus evil. From the beginning of time, God has gathered and called forth warriors in the fight against evil. I believe none of us chose this profession. We were made for it. I believe that we are told, I believe what we are told in the book of, Roman, of, in the book of Romans, that God has instilled in each of us abilities and skills needed for such a noble and righteous profession. Character, honesty, 
integrity, passion, determination, common sense, reasoning ability, and most importantly, the strength and the courage to do things that most others are afraid to do or simply cannot do. He then led our lives down a specific path which led us to this career. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 12 through 15, God asked, who shall I send? Isaiah stood up and said, send me. As we sit here today, remember and mourn the loss and celebrate the lives of nine heroes who answer God's call, stood up and said, send me. The requirement of a civil society is an adherence to the rules of law and the punishment of the evil rapscallions who, who would do us harm. Law enforcement is that thin blue line that separates the calm from the chaos and the peaceful from the violent. Unfortunately, we seem to have more and more politicians living in a fantasy land where up is down, right is wrong, and wrong is right. They are either naive to the fact that evil exists, or they are complicit in the destruction of our social compact. You must either stand up against evil, or you stand with and you support evil. I will continue to challenge those souls to come see for themselves, ride in our cars, work in our jails, and witness the evil we deal with. The last five California law, enfor law enforcement officers to die on duty were murdered by evil men with no regard for our laws or the value of human life. All of them had extensive criminal histories and all of them should have been in jail or prison. They were not in jail because of a failed social experiment where criminals are empowered by a sick and twisted version of so-called criminal justice reform that paints law enforcement as the bad guy and the criminal as the victim of society. Five sons, five dads, five husbands, five officers who'd, who would still be with us had it not been for a failed justice system in California. I stand here today on behalf of the fallen, their families, all of law enforcement, all of the victims of crime, and the law-abiding residents of California to adamantly proclaim that we have had enough. When evil spits in the face of our laws and fights against the warriors who hold the line of a civil society, certainly the safety of society as a whole is in peril. Our fallen brothers and sisters gave their lives to all that is good in this world. We will continue to put on these uniforms in their honor so that their sacrifice will not be in vain and they will never be forgotten. I pray for the day when we no longer add names to this memorial. I also pray for the day that our lawmakers and politicians care more about public safety, victims, law-abiding residents, and law enforcement officers than they do criminals. Until then, and with complete disregard for the adversity we face, we will continue to put service above self as we honorably and proudly continue the eternal battle of good versus evil. To our grieving families, rest assured, the sacrifice and the loss of your loved one will never be forgotten, and you will always be a part of our extended family. Thank you all for making this journey to this, this year's memorial service as we honor those lost in 2022. I wish all of you a safe home, and God bless the families and the partners of our fallen heroes.
Thank you, Sheriff Bianco. Lieutenant Elmore, change color guard. The riderless horse is an ancient military custom signifying the passing of a warrior. The sound of the horse's hooves beating on the road behind the master's casket is a reminder that the warrior is being honored. This horse is called a Garuthasen horse, referring to its ornamental coverings. The bridle, the saddle, and the blanket, like the horse, these are black or dark brown. The customary colors for mourning the lost of a loved one. Notice the boots are reversed in the stirrups, suggesting that the order of things is reversed, caused by the death of a warrior who would ride no more. The riderless horse's presence at today's ceremony, ceremony represents the passing of a great warrior and honors the officer who died in the line of duty and will ride no more. Lieutenant Elmore. Will you please post the honor guard representing the agencies of our fallen heroes?
it is our sad duty at this time to formally recognize and enroll in bronze as a permanent part of this monument, the names of the nine peace officers we are honoring here today who gave their lives in the line of duty for all Californians. Pipes and drums, please join me now as I now read the names of our honored peace officers to be enroll enrolled today. Officer Michael Edward Wall, Los Angeles County Probation Department, end of watch, April 30th, 2021. Officer Tyler Ryan Lenahan, Elk Grove Police Department, end of watch, January 21, 2022. Officer Nicholas J. Vela, Huntington Beach Police Department, end of watch, February 19th, 2022.
Correctional Lieutenant Steve M. Taylor, Riverside County Sheriff's Office, end of watch, February 24th, 2022. Officer Jorge David Alvarado, Jr., Salinas Police Department, end of watch, February 25th, 2022. Officer Houston Ryan Tipping, Los Angeles Police Department, end of watch, May 29th, 2022.
Sergeant Michael Paredes, El Monte Police Department. End of watch, June 14, 2022. Officer Joseph A. Santana, El Monte Police Department, June 14th, 2022. Deputy Isaiah A. Cordero, Riverside County Sheriff's Office, end of watch, December 29th, 2022.
At this time, Chief Bobby Davis of the Elk Grove Police Department will recite the poem, The Monument. The poem was written by the late Sergeant George Hahn of the Los Angeles Police Department. As I stand here today, and looking out into this crowd, I see the families of the fallen. Please take your seats. I hope that you have an opportunity to look around you, look at all the different color uniforms, see the people who are here for you, because this day is truly about you. The sacrifices that you have made for us, who your loved ones have made for us. To all the membership that is around, the membership in uniform, thank you for being here. None of us want to do this. None of us want to come and have to honor the fallen, but we thank you for doing it. As I stand here and look into the crowd, I see all of you. I see the membership. I see the families, those on the wall, and we must hope that there are no more lost. However, we must honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our communities, our profession, our state, and for you, the families. Know that we look at the wall, we see the names of the brave and the strong who gave themselves selflessly to a calling that is much bigger than themselves. And while we acknowledge and honor that sacrifice, please know that we see you. And when you see us look in your eyes, and as much as we want to turn away, because it does hurt, we know we can't. We can never turn away because your loved one made the ultimate sacrifice for us, and they didn't turn away. They faced the danger and gave themselves for us. Know that as much as it hurts, we will always stand here, and we will see you and them. When you look into our eyes, you will know one thing for sure. The women and men of our membership will never forget our fallen, and we will never forget you. We will never forget our loved ones, and we will never forget our obligation to serve and protect, not only our communities, but to you, as you are now our survivors too. As deeply and profoundly sad we are when we lose a loved one, know that you will never lose this membership and our support for you or support for your families. From our hearts, we love you and thank you for your sacrifice. And together and united, our membership stands up with you and your families as we all navigate this day of days, this memorial, and every day without our fallen. Love one another, show compassion and care, and kindness will rule our day of days. The monument. I never dreamed it would be me. My name for all eternity, recorded here at this hollow place. Alas, my name, no more my face. In the line of duty, I hear them say, my family now the price will pay. My folded flag, stained with their tears, we only had those few short years. The badge no longer on my chest, I sleep now in eternal rest. My sword, I pass to those behind and pray they keep this thought in mind. I never dreamed it would be me. And with heavy heart and bended knee, I ask for all, I ask for here from the past, dear God, let my name be the last. <laughs> 